20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. What's up, shipbuilders? It's been a while since I've flown a slow C-Class engine ship. The faster Class A or White Dwarf 3015s make a real difference in combat, but we still got the job done. So today we're building a great ship to roleplay the Constellation questline, NASA's Shuttle Orbiter. As always, this build is equipped with the most powerful components. To start, we've got the Pinch 8Z reactor. It's got the most power points in the game at 40. And it's a class C reactor, so we can use class C parts. Our grav drive is hidden right in the middle of the ship. If you know how I choose grav drives, it's just the lightest mass grav drive that gets me at least 28 light years of jump range. We've got the Assurance SG-1800 shield, most shield health in the game. In the engines, we've got a mix just to get the right look of the back of the orbiter. So three Sal 6830s, and then a couple of those white dwarfs uh, on either side. And even though those White Dwarf 1020 engines are Class A engines, we're still only getting 130 top speed because of the Class C Sal 6830s. So this is a bit of a slower ship, uh, kind of lumbers along. You've got a lot of mobility though because you've got a lot of maneuvering thrust. And with the weapons uh, that we're going to talk about, you'll see that you'll just mop the floor with all enemy ships. For particle beams, I mean weapons, it's all particle beams. Full particle beam loadout, Vanguard Obliterator auto projectors, PBO 175 auto helion beams, and PBO 300 auto alpha projectors. Those PBO 300s um, aren't quite as good as the Exterminator 95 auto helion beams, but uh, I like my weapons to be symmetrical as well. And you can have up to four of those PBO 300s, which is why I went with those. Now for the build, we're gonna do this in layers. 
I actually started this build with the Frontier, uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. I really didn't use that many parts from the Frontier, but the Frontier's Hab uh, is actually a unique Hab in the game, and so I wanted to keep that uh, just to fit the roleplay style of, of this ship, and so I started with the Frontier. I mostly deleted all the pieces, though, except for uh, its single main 2 by one Hab. So to start, we've got the NG6 landing bay, um, and behind that is the docker. So connecting those two, is, I've got a Tayo workshop. Uh, it's a bottom B version. You'll notice the B version of these Tayo habs have connector points on all sides, versus the A versions do not have connector points on the sides, but they have a nice rounded look to them. So we'll use some of those later. I use some of these Hope Tech nose caps uh, on the back just to kind of give it a cleaner look. And then coming down the middle of the ship, we've got the reactor, the helium tank, uh, which is the most efficient one in the game. There's that uh, frontier hab, and then a captain's quarters in front of that. Now for landing gear, I use these NG-20 landing gear. These have the highest landing thrust in the game. You can get these from New Homestead on Titan, so you have to make a trip there. Uh, and I've got four of these landing gear total on the ship. Now to connect this central kind of main spine, we actually first need to connect uh, some of these 2x2 two two habs. So see I've got a battle station here. You can get these 2x2 two two or greater habs direct from each ship manufacturer. So I had to go to Tayo or Neon to get those. And you'll see the pinch reactor then connects to the side of that 2x2 two two hab since it doesn't have connector points on the back of it. So then we can take this frontier hab uh, and connect that of our main spine. Here's that other NG-20 landing gear. We'll sit underneath the 2x2. Two two. And then we've got a couple of these uh, nose cap pieces and a, a Nova wing cowling on the side here to kind of complete the wing the left wing of our shuttle here. Now I know technically you're supposed to call it an orbiter, um, but most people call it a shuttle, so I'll use those interchangeably. Those of you that know, you know. Uh, to kind of get more of a swept wing look, um, we've got that Stroud mid bracer with the Deimos bumper, and then a couple of these Deimos wings on the side. These Deimos wings also give us some weapon mounts underneath, which are nice. And it's the same thing on the other side. I used the brig. You could go with a 2x2 two two living quarters, whatever you want. We'll put the other landing gear underneath on the other side. And then the mid racer and bumper and the two Davos wings towards the front. starting to get the shape of the ship. This was one of the ships where I felt the 2x2 two two halves were kind of nice. That was a nice use case for those because it was still a symmetrical shape. Usually when I use those, uh, my halves aren't very symmetrical in their layout, so this, this just kind of felt good. I think I've got these Hope Tech nose pieces in the wrong spot. I'm going to move them to the outside one just so I can fit the engines connect the engines to the back of those halves. Again, the Sal 6830 engines. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on the best engines in the game, um, I go into a lot of detail about why these actually aren't the best engines in the game. But for Class C engines, um, they do serve a good purpose. And so that video goes into a lot of depth on those specifically as well as what actually are the best engines in the game. For the look of this ship, those 6830s made a lot of sense. weapon mounts just to kind of round out the look of those engines as well. Um, so they're not just so abrupt on the back of the ship. So now we've just got Habs going across the top down the center spine of the ship to finish this out. We'll move the main structure over a little closer just to make our lives easier. 
So we'll have another Tayo cowling on the front and gives us that nice nose shape. And then computer core, again, choose whatever halves you want. You'll notice this is the A version, so it doesn't have connector points on the side, but it gives a nicer rounded shape. And then kind of hidden within the main fuselage, the main body of our ship, we've got a grav drive uh, and, some, and a main cargo hold. Now to help hide these pieces and give it a clean look on the outside of using these Tayo side caps, this is the B version, so you'll notice they do have connector points on the outside. There is an A version without connector points. Your call uh, makes no difference. So we've got those lining each side just to hide the grab drive, reactor, and fuel tank. And then coming off the main hab, we've got just a one by one to get us up to the top habs which will bring us to the cockpit. And then connected on the back of that one is our last 6830 engine. So when you come up the ladder from that first tab, you'll come all the way up into this. I used an infirmary. Again, use what you want. This is the Tayo B version, so connector points on the sides so that I can fit these white dwarf 1020s. These aren't the greatest engines, but again, this is for aesthetics in this case. Um, and we did max out our engine power at 12 power units, so, you know, got a lot of thrust. For the tail, the Deimos cowling and then the Deimos tail piece. Which just kind of rounds out the hard edges on the tail. Assurance shield for that max shield health. And then finally, last couple halves, these are the A versions of the Tayo halves to get that rounded shape on top. We don't need connector points on the side. And then the last piece is our cockpit. In this case, I'm using the Tayo command bridge. This is the best version of Tayo's cockpit or bridge. You can get this directly from Tayo Astroneering and Neon. It has a lot of cargo space, which is why I'm using it but you can use a lower version. You'll just miss out on a little bit of cargo space, but it's no big deal. It looks exactly the same on the inside. And that's it for the build. Now let's go into a walkthrough of the interior so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Now there are a couple ladders, just given the layout that you, you could imagine kind of where those ladders are. There's one straight up when you come in from the landing bay to get to the habs that are going across the top of the ship. And so when you first enter, you come in here to our workshop. Oh, if only they were actually making something useful. And we've got those two by twos off to either side. And so I've got a brig, which again, I wish you could actually use as a brig. And on the other side, my battle stations. Again, choose whatever you want. If you don't even want these and you want to use just cargo, just do that. Completely up to you. We'll come up one of these ladders. Again, this is just a one by one to get you up to the top. Sounds like something's glitching out. Vasco, as usual. So we'll keep going. Being that this was the orbiter, I thought it made sense to have an infirmary. And then that leads into the science hab. So, true role play, constellation quest line here. And then our command center off of that. So, a lot of crew spaces in this ship as well. You can max out uh, your crew if you desire and then into the cockpit at the top. Now because I wanted to keep that hab from the frontier originally, because that is a unique hab in the game, we've got a ladder heading down from here, right off the cockpit. So I do have a computer core here right underneath, just gets me another crew space. And then we'll drop down. Uh, we've got that 
frontier tab right here. We drop down into the captain's quarters, so we do have a bed. Uh, but behind us is that hab from the frontier. And so this is unique. It does have a couple unique items in it, I believe. I think that helmet that we just looked at on the shelf above where she's creepily watching Omari sleep, but whatever. So we've got this broken helmet. I think that's a unique piece. Up to you what habs you want to use. If you didn't want to keep these or use different habs down here, you could probably fill this out with cargo or something else. Totally up to you. I hope you enjoy this build. Again, it's a great ship for the main constellation questline. And until next time, keep building.